start. It is, um, and I'll start right here. Um, it is Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is May 27th. And um, I um, mentioned last week, um, oh good, lots of people coming here, that um, I had just been finishing some portfolios with a group of students from um, Ellis Preparatory uh, High School in the Bronx. And um, so I want to kind of show some of those, but then I remembered that um, that uh, Don Reed had also uh, a portfolio to show us. And, and you know, for me, portfolios and David Nicodula go together. So uh -huh. w without, without saying more about um, who we all are, I want to kind of just jump in and look at some of the um, some of the student work um, that uh, we are talking about. Don, are are you ready to kind of show? So we're going to start by by well introduce yourselves. First time you talk, introduce yourself, say who you are. Um, I've sort of indicated who I am. I'm Paul Ellis. <laughs> work with the New York City Writing Project um, and the National Writing Project, and have been building these LRNG portfolios mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, and um, um, one of the things I did was um, show a couple of them to a professor from Lehman College, Harriet. Why don't you, we're gonna do introductions, sorry. Harriet, introduce yourself, if you don't mind. Okay, so I'm, I'm now looking at the, at the, at the LRNG page. Um, so, so again, I'm not quite sure how to navigate back without creating chaos for myself but we can, um, you, we can see and hear you you're good okay good um so my name is really nikki fain although it officially is harriet um and um i'm a recovering administrator um who have i spent a lot of time essentially teaching people how to be teachers or administering programs to help people teach people to be teachers um I would say that an area of my, a great area of interest in practical inquiry has been around the notion of alternative forms of assessment, including portfolios, starting with first graders um, in inner city Columbus, feeling that standardized tests probably weren't the best way to assess a kid's literacy skills. Um, moving into um, faculty portfolios is a way to really look at strengths and weaknesses teaching portfolios and improve teaching at the college level. Um, in teacher education, lots of emphasis on e-portfolios as a way for teachers to really reflect on their practice. And I had the luxury of some years ago um, watching students um, learn about youth voices on the Lehman campus. And that's where I ran across um, Paul and the kind of work that he's doing and the kind of work that you folks are doing. Um, I have a, a grant um, that requires that we, again, um, prepare people to be teachers for high needs schools. And the topic of multiple literacy seems to be a paramount um, topic. And so that brings me here to LRNG. And I've lurked through a number of the uh, the portfolios, and I'm I'm gobsmacked by the kind of work that you folks are doing with students, because you're making real the notion of choice and voice, and perhaps the most interesting thing to me is the notion of really creating uh, youth activism through um, multiple literacies. So thank you for including me. Well, thank you, um, uh, David. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, we'll sure. Everybody who has a doctor in front of them, and then we'll keep on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just make that the yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm David. Uh, I'm in uh, Rhode Island. Uh, for a long time, was with um, where I met a bunch of you folks was with the group called the Coalition of Essential Schools, and you know the uh, uh, I caught that bug early on when Ted Sizer was talking about how. The real notion of assessment needs to be that of exhibition rather than um, standardized testing, which made sense to me. And at the time, technology was emerging. So I came to him and said, you know, we should probably put these things together. And um, my work, and those of you on the call remember from the University Heights days, 
Um, this notion at the time, we were still trying to convince people that email wasn't a fad and literally rewiring University Heights High School in order to accommodate the idea that computers on different floors could actually talk to each other. So we've been at this from sort of beginning stages of it, but the sort of fundamental start um, is around what do we know about kids and what, do they, what can they show what they are able to do? And a little later, we'll look at some of our latest stuff. But uh, for the last, and David um, does have an example to show us. And just yes, I do. Thank you for the brief introduction. There's so much. Sorry. To be said. <laughs> Tanya, do you want to say hello? Sure. My name is Tanya Baker. I'm the director of national programs at the National Writing Project. And I think that's really all you need to know about me tonight. That's a brief introduction. Well, what, uh, and we invited you because there's something going on around micro. Oh. Do you, you want to? Give us a hint of what that is and maybe we'll have time later but yeah so if you've been in the writing project for the last five years you have probably heard somebody often it was me talking about how we should have badges and we will have badges and we're about to have badges and um this summer we are rolling out uh nwp badges so we um if people who have been in the college career and community writers program c3wp um we are offering three levels of badges a teacher, uh, C3WP teacher, a facil PD facilitator, and a designer. And uh, we will similarly have badges for people who have um, done assessment work in NWP and scoring. Uh, but the big rollout for the summer is that people will be able to earn a teacher consultant badge. And that's what I'll talk about later if we have time. Great. So as you can see, we're all over the place, which is great. Thank you. Um, wanted to make sure so i want to circle around to the three teachers i specifically invited and make sure they get a chance to talk karen cheltry um is going to show a couple if you haven't found them yet kind of I, do you know where where the link is to them if, if you find the email about the, tonight you can find a link there or i can put it in hi karen do you want to say hello oh you're muted or something's wrong Hi, I'm there you go. Jodery. Um, I teach, uh, I taught with Suzanne and Paul at University Heights a few decades ago um, and um, had the pleasure of uh, working with David. <clears throat> um, and now I teach at Harvest Collegiate High School in Manhattan, um, a public high school. Um, in the Department of Education. Um, and I've been able to, um, for a number of years, work on, um, have my ninth and 10th grade English students work on youthvoices.live uh, and um, on LRNG. And um, last year, last spring, last spring it was, yep. we, I mean, this fall we worked on Macbeth, and my students wrote um, over two thousand uh, um, comments in now comment on the um, it, on the play, um, which was exciting. They were talking to each other, including. Well, we're, here to, we're, we're here tonight for the poetry portfolios. Is that for Wendy's and George's portfolios? Okay. So you can find those. I guess we can put those links in the yep. chat. And you'll, you'll get a chance to show those. Don from Michigan. Hi. Do you want to Hi. introduce yourself and tell us what you're going to show us? Hi, I'm Don Reed. I teach English in Okemos, Michigan, which is about five miles away from Michigan State University. And I'm a co-director of Red Cedar Writing Project. And I've been working with portfolios in various ways for a long time. And then we've been working on LRNG and playlists and inviting students into that space. And so last, we had, um, I had a semester class of creative writing, so it was fall semester. And I had a student who by choice created a portfolio within the LNRG um, framework. So we were talking a lot in the fall about how to get portfolios going and what they would look like and how exciting they are in that space tied to badges and credentialing. And to be fair, you you do have done portfolios over the year, 
over the yeah, years. Yeah, so this in, is my in first time ways. Yeah. in the LR and RG system. So I have students that do portfolios every year, and I've done portfolios with almost every grade of high school, and um, of course, teachers in the summertime when they come to the summer institute. So the thinking around it for me also includes the different spaces and places that we operate for portfolios. Cool. And Suzanne Valenza. It's a nice transition. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you're unmuted, but we still can't hear you. Yeah. Wait. There you are. Hi, okay. I'm Hi. Suzanne Valenza, and I'm an English teacher at Jericho High School, which is on Long Island. And um, I started at University Heights when we were doing, gosh, I think portfolios as folders with student work and then roundtables. And um, I've since kind of gone from that to binders to rudimentary websites. And now um, my kids, I've kind of evolved the portfolio into a portfolio and a website that kind of gets at who the student is as a person and then focuses on their writing. And I'm, I also teach, a, it comes out of a creative writing class that I teach at Jericho, which is mostly for seniors. So again, part of that evolution into the website is also goes with how um, I have students presenting their work and themselves to colleges. And recently the college, the common application has now a space on the application for a student's personal website, a URL. So I kind of, it kind of serves two purposes now and it's a broader sense of who the kid is. Um, I wish there were more subject areas in it, but right now it's just the work is only from the creative writing class. So I have some samples we could show of those websites. Very cool. And, and others here might have samples too, but I'm going to close our world off at this point. <laughs> and, and, and maybe um, ask, David, you said you had something ready to pop up and then Don will go to you next, if that's okay. Some, an, an example to show us, is that fair? You, <laughs> Hey guys, you're allowed to stay unmuted. <laughs> Wait. Unmute. Oh, Unmute. Okay. <laughs> Next I have to, and now I have to share my screen, which I have to do. Sorry. Um, That's all good. Just click there and oh, click God. here. Oh, so with any luck, you guys see a um, set of icons? We do. So, yep. Yay. Okay, so, um, so we've been doing, um, in Rhode Island, uh, portfolio has been a graduation requirement for a while, about um, since the class of 08. And most, uh, so we've got, um, we have a number of schools that have organized their badges around the portrait of a graduate. So here is what the student should know and be able to do. They need to be, in this case, a citizen, a communicator, a learner, a thinker. I'm going to blow this up a little bit, it's a little easier to see. Um, but one of the particular things that we've been looking at, a lot of you guys are going to be talking about uh, writing stuff, so I thought I'd show something else. Um, we have a bunch of schools that have developed pathways. And what um, this particular school does is has pathways in various um, disciplines ranging from uh, biomed and healthcare to construction to manufacturing to all sorts of things. So the idea is that over time the kids are accumulating their best work to earn this badge and what they need to be able to do, um, and I, I've tried this before, it doesn't work well over Zoom so you just have to trust me, but basically this video is, is the student talking about his portfolio. So this David, portfolio is earning the badge. David, there is, there is a little button to click that allows the video to be heard. I don't that? know. You um, have to choose it when you share your screen. So, oh. Um, is it worth? It's not um, really. I mean, it's like okay. 10 seconds. It says like, hi, you know, here I am. And, and you know, I mean. You um, uh, can read I, his lips. We can read. So. Okay, um, great. You, got, you know, he's just talking about who he is. Um, but one of the things that happens is that the students are asked to essentially choose their best work to say, what is it that shows that I've got the skills needed for um, a particular badge? So he's put together some, um, he can select here from his different science classes, 
the various kinds of activities that he's done and say, you know, I really think that this um, lab report or this, um, and let's see, I'm trying to remember which one has the, um, one of these has a video of him actually going through the lab. And this this one? Nope, that's just a Word document. Um, but for each one of these, we can see the specific goals, we can see the summary, we can see the reflections and the actual student work. So we have here different kinds of lab reports that the kids can put together. So the idea is that there's a purpose to these works and it goes across multiple classes so that the idea of this badge isn't limited to one specific, um, I have to do this this year, I've got to do this course. And the kids asked to do an overall reflection on their work. So, so this is just the sort of structure of it. And the idea is that the kids can put in, they've been um, collecting the work in their different classes. And then as they get towards 11th, 12th grade, they put together this, this um, tour to say, I have the pieces in place to show that I'm ready to earn this batch. So that's one um, process. And what's the badge he's working on here? In this case, it's a biomedical sciences. And so that they have the a, that's, that's the pathway that they've got there. So students can take a set of courses. And um, in this case, they um, do a, uh, at least one course in a hospital. You know, so or or they can be as an EMT. So um, some of the that's not in this particular um, students set of things, but other kids have put in things from this internship. Here's the stuff we did to learn about first aid or or whatever uh, to do that. Um, so I wanted to show you two examples. So this was one. Good. This is kind of built out of the traditional thing. And just as, uh, because I know there's a lot of folks who have things to show, just to wrap up, um, give you another view. We can come back around too, maybe. But yeah, go ahead, keep going with this one. Yeah. Okay, it's just, um, is w one of the things that we have pursued with this idea is students creating their own badges. So schools are developing courses and pathways and so on. But one of the things that's useful here is that, um, we now have the ability for kids to create their own badges and say, so this was an example, I'm interested in space exploration. And the students can list what's the evidence that they're going to do to uh, earn cool. a badge. Um, and especially with the, all this home learning, you know, and distance learning going on these days. So things like I'm going to take an um, online NASA course and, and um, watch cosmos and you know virtually visit a museum or whatever so this becomes a way that the badge itself isn't generated from above but the kids actually creating it and once they click there they go in and we edit it i can upload whatever work comes to mind. So and art, artifacts case, can be multimodal. Exactly. So um, there's a picture in this case. But we saw before Cole uploaded a video and we had some more documents and we have whatever else. So and there's a space for reflections. But the idea here is that especially right now, we're really pushing um, schools to think about, especially this coming school year, to think about breaking stuff down into pieces that go beyond the traditional course because who knows what next year's English 10 is going to look like um, given a lot of kids lift must a third of English 9. So, um, so they, these are the things we're thinking about. And right. is that kind yeah. of what you're looking for? That, that's a great start. Yeah. Okay. So, so but, but uh, let me open up that, that can of worms uh, you and i have for decades been talking mm -hmm. about how you know how um outcomes and uh, what kids actually do is is more important than seat time right mm -hmm. and we're now in a place where seat time is not possible <laughs> right. right so you've reflected on that or thought about that or 
Yeah, well, I mean, it, it definitely fits in with what we've been saying all along is that the idea of the GPA, the I, that of, of the um, course as a unit in itself is more a convenience than anything else. It's not about um, the set of mastery that we want kids to be able to do. So this has been encouraging that um, schools sort of are finding themselves backed up against the wall. Um, you know, the, the schools you guys work with, many of whom have been thinking about these things, you know, this has been a moment to sort of reflect that. A lot of schools are confronting it for the first time. It's sometimes as simple as, we don't know what to do for final exams. You know, we can't give the traditional paper and pencil, multiple choice, whatever, essay type thing. Um, uh -huh. So it's been just um, a whole bunch of new folks coming into the fold. And um, right. I do think that the notion of um, the credential, if we break it down into these smaller pieces and just sort of say, here's what the kids are, here's what they've mastered, you know, let them show those accomplishments. That's what badges can do. Great. Don, do you want to? I'll stop my share. Thank you. Do you want to share your creative writing portfolio? Sure. So I'm coming to you next, Karen, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Perfect. So as I said, I've worked with students in portfolios in different ways. So this one's actually really interesting to me because Husnan was a junior in my American literature class the year before and created a portfolio for that class. And then for my creative writing class the following year, one of their final exam pieces was a choice project. And he chose to create a creative writing portfolio inside the LNRG. So we had done different playlists. And so you'll see he was engaged and involved in Youth Voices work and did playlists through LNRG and earned badges for different um, pieces. So he has the one about himself. Um, and then he did one on you, immigration and justice. And then he chose to include a short story that he wrote for the class. So there were playlists that he completed and then his choice work. And then he had information about himself as well. Um, and and what, it was interesting to me, this one was extra interesting because I had a comparison of two different years for the student. And so I found while we were talking, I found his portfolio from the year before oh, and good. he used Google sites mm -hmm. and he had different requirements for this. So this was a whole year course. So there's um, he has a <laughs> list of portfolio pieces and reflections <coughs> that are part of the requirements of the assignment for the portfolio too. Um, and when I have students work in this portfolio, they can use, they use either Google sites or um, Weebly or Wix and they create a portfolio that's on a website for themselves. Um, so yeah, so I found his pieces across the two and he was really excited when he shared, he presented this to the class, was very excited about the notion of playlists and the inspiration behind them and how they walk you through um, and you earn a badge, like walk you through the sections and earn a badge and prompt you to think about a lot of different content. And he liked the choice of that. He liked, he was complimentary of the previous year, but I think he liked um, this portfolio quite a bit because it was within the system and he saw the connections also to youth voices. So that was kind of exciting for him. Cool. Um, just to stay on that, theme of if we don't have seat time then what do we have started to think about playlists and badges in terms of okay and I've, I've done some of this calculating you can kind of imagine but if we could say like this playlist takes about 11 hours to do and if you do four of these playlists you'll have the equivalent of a a 54-hour course that's what's required in new york state um right for for the work so Doing that kind of crosswalking around playlists and badges is something that I'd like to sort of keep in the back of our heads as we move into this new reality that we're facing. Um, I think that would be exciting to be able to go in and say, here's a package that you could do that would be, and, and sort of like 
you could show this creative writing portfolio as an example of what a student could do to earn credit. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would also say in, mm -hmm. for, for this student, both portfolios he created were part of his final exam grade. But the piece about the creative writing one that I would highlight is that there was less guidance from me based on the like setting up the portfolio than the previous year. So the other one had a lot of steps and a lot of like, I'm going to walk you through this. This portfolio, it's, I think is significant based on what you're saying, Paul, is that here is a high school senior that went in and I walked them through how to do playlists and introduce them to LRG. But after that, I said, here's a cool thing you can do with portfolios. I bet you could figure it out. <laughs> and here's a little bit about it. And I showed him a very little bit and he just ran with it and really liked it and was proud of it um, in the end. And it tied to it, did the work tied to it. And he was really t excited about the, the immigration piece and the especially yeah. current issue pieces as well. I did want to say, if, if you're unfamiliar with badges, you could click on any of these points. You click on one of them, and 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 at the at the um, and then go to the badge. It's up in the upper right. It says go to badge. Yep. You can go to the badge. You can see. You could have gone to the assignment also, but you can see what the expectations were here. And then down below, you can see the um, the work that he presented for his evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is there is a way to click through to the work, just to say, um, sort of uh, how it's set up. I I, I want to move on, um, but if, if, quick questions for Don though, or thoughts, if somebody wants to open this up a little bit, or what are you thinking right now? <laughs> Can I ask a question? Please. Um, as I as I listen to David and and also look at. Don the the lrng i see a series of tests which students have to perform i noticed david that your set evaluation how do we determine that something is badge worthy um mm -hmm. or do we just assume that what the student does by completing the the task is sufficient no that's a fascinating question um a lot of the work a lot of the serious work that goes into this is creating those kinds of common rubrics and common language for what's going to be good enough, particularly around um, some of the um, criteria that, you know, what does it mean to work well with others? What does it mean to demonstrate, um, uh, you know, the, the non-academic skills that we're looking for? Um, there are lots and lots of rubrics out there. I mean, the, the, the fact is people have addressed a bunch of these, but what's most important seems to be the school itself coming together to come to an agreement about what's there. So calibration exercises and so on. Okay. So you can David, find, that, yeah, go ahead. That was my question from your work. It seems like, like the kids, I mean, the teachers have calibrated this to a certain extent, right? So now then the kids, like, have they worked with the kids to calibrate when the kids are designing their own? So I mean, that could be an interesting way to go. Right. So the way schools have started that we've worked with is um, the teachers will first start, school starting from scratch, uh, will go to the faculty and say, pick three or four assignments that you give right now that you think would be portfolio worthy candidates. And let's look at them. Let's analyze them. What are they actually representing? How do we make sure that they're getting to what you really think is important for this class? Um, is it just a, is it something that people like to do because it's actually meaningful learning or is it just something big that they do? You know, there can be a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so when the teachers start to have a sense of what makes a portfolio worthy assignment, it becomes easier for them to talk to kids as they develop their own projects. And people are starting to do this with PBL um, to have that conversation when the kid says, I want to do a space exploration, you know, um, that's just not enough to say, well, I'm going to go online and, and copy a Wikipedia page and that'll be my submission. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's through the practice of seeing portfolio worthy tests in their classes that they have a sense of, of how to make it. Yeah. And that's, I, it sounds easier than actually, as you guys know, it's a messy process. Right. But, but right, that's right, the right, right. Yeah, Don, I was saying, wondering about Hussein too. Yeah, so his portfolios included reflection. So like his American literature portfolio, any piece he included, he had to explain what the piece was in terms of his intended audience purpose, but also what it showed or demonstrated about him as a writer. So that reflection piece was a big part of that. And it was, I mean, I know you just saw kind of like the screen, but I heard him in class talk about that mm -hmm and carry that over the next year and include elements of that. Like, why is this piece important? How has it grown over time? What does it show about me? So all of those elements of assessment and thinking rhetorically about his work were part of it too. And then um, for people who were talking about badging, the ones that we did in LRNG, in order to earn a badge, students would get feedback. And if they didn't, um, complete certain tasks or complete them in a rich way. They were given feedback and opportunities to revise. And so they are getting that feedback in the process too. I think that feedback through the process of portfolio creation is a really important part of the conversation for teachers. Um, and a, that is also important in terms of peer feedback so that students can see what other people are creating in different models. I think that's a really important piece. Can you talk about, I'm, this is Trey from Philadelphia. I'm curious if you could talk a little bit more about like what, like what tools do you do that? Like I can imagine looking at a, comp a student's computer and talking with them, right? But like, what does that look like asynchronously? What does that look like peer to peer? Where is that stuff getting written? In terms of feedback, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I've been fortunate to work with Eli Review in my classes, so we, but also I use Google Drive um, a lot. So in my classes, we've been able to do like shared documents and looking at models and then breaking down and having the conversation around models and then really focused on um, how to give good feedback and practice around that and then move them into looking at other people's writings. And there are, there are, of course, lots of different platforms that people are exploring in all kinds of places, but, it, but um, the sequence of model, genre study, conversation around that, and then to creation of our own with the whole writing process, and then step-by-step um, -step really how do you give feedback. And I think it's uh, like lots of opportunities. So for my students in the past, it has been they start with how do you respond to writing in class, but then also in youth voices conversation. So some of it about conversation and ideas and really trying to get to higher order elements of the writing and then also teaching them the refining and editing skills. I'm curious, David and Don, you could both answer this. I'm curious in terms of how, where do you start at the beginning of the year? Like what is, what is a student's starting piece that they would put in the portfolio and then as you go throughout the year how do you how do you assess that student and maybe it's more of an individualized but how do you how are you assessing students and saying yes these students grew as writers or these students progressed to a point to where i know that they have done a substantial amount of work and showed growth throughout the year i'm kind of curious to hear from both of you on that we'll give you 30 seconds each but that's a such a big question but, it's a big uh, question. I think I can stick to 45 seconds. We'll okay. see. <laughs> I started at the beginning of the year with lots of writing and I usually when I do big portfolios, I don't necessarily introduce the portfolio until students already have drafts of lots of pieces. So it doesn't feel like this monumentous task. They go, we go back and say, what have you already done? And what do you want to come back to and revise? So I build that in with just writing writing workshop in my classes related to whatever the class is. And then for um, my American literature class, that, that portfolio, I, did, I made an, um, one of their assignments was a C3WP assignment around create an argument that you've grown as a writer and they have to actually go across all their pieces and talk about how it shows their growth as a writer. And that um, in the past, 
in terms of assessment. I didn't do that before I was doing work with C3WP. And since I added that piece, it was so awesome because they could pick out specifics and were really looking closely at things I was looking for as in terms of their writing and then also how they saw themselves grow across the pieces. And so that's probably one of my favorite elements that I've added to it and has been very successful for me. David, yeah. do you want to take a crack at there were some sure. things there, but yeah. I mean the platform and, and the assessment. How do you do the assessment, right? But say well, what the, yeah. the baseline stuff, right? So how do we start at the beginning of the year? Um, there's some very cool stuff we've seen, um, particularly in language classes, say on oral presentations. So just do a baseline piece, the beginning of the year, um, Spanish, English, whatever, just let's have the students do something. There's no, it's just uploading and it gets people used to the platform and just sort of you know, do that. But then two months, three months, six months later, do a similar type of assignment and ask the students um, as part of their submission, they have to submit the old piece and the new piece and talk about the growth in between. So just the mere fact of recording something in the beginning is helpful uh, to make that do that. Um, so, uh, but Dawn's stuff is very cool. I mean, what I, I just heard you talking about, that, that's great, you know, it'll work well. So. Likewise. <laughs> Thank you both. I'm sorry to rush on. Karen, no. do you wanna to try to share your screen? You ready? You gotta unmute. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. All right, share screen. Uh, um, hmm. What happened? Do you want me to do it or are you okay? Um, you should do it um, uh, because I, um, okay. yeah, because I have to admit that um, I got uh, skittish about Zoom and <laughs> down and uh, took it off. Gotcha. Okay. So am All I right. showing now? I am. <clears throat> Yep. Yeah. So go to so, and anybody can can go and do this also. What I'm right. about to do, this is all sort of public out there. You can look at it. So you gotta find though um lrng.org slash o slash youth dash voices. All right. And then go ahead, Karen. So um if you would go to and you go to portfolios. Yep. To Wendy's portfolio. Okay. And each of these have their own link, but we'll, I'll find it, I think. There, and you it? can find their links um, in the invite for this session. There's Janet's kids. Okay. Wendy. Here's Wendy. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, if you scroll down uh, to the second paragraph. Yeah. So, um, so the amount of the, the um, reflection that she did on her entries, on her artifacts, um, uh, what, we, what I stressed um, that semester was um, not actually so much the reflection as, the, as um, getting all the pieces in. Um, the only reason being that uh, there were so many pieces and not enough time. So shall that's we, something shall that we, we do orient? Just go through yeah. the portfolio. Good. Yeah. So there is. Go ahead. There's an about me section that she mm -hmm. wrote. And you'll notice in the um, at the end of that about me, she's. Uh, if you go up, yes. Um, uh, um, and go down a bit. To write and record. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, when I'm it, it, the last sentence there, when I'm older, I'll be able to look back at my portfolio and later on say, I remember what I wanted to be at this age. <laughs> so. Um, and so here is her badge and her work. Right. Um, just for her bio. 
So mm-hmm. if, and you can see that she has her um, bio that she wrote in Google Docs, and then she published it in Youth Voices. And then she commented on a classmate's bio, Jillian's bio, and also on Jovana's bio. So there's your um, cross pollination. There's your mm-hmm. making um, models and um, reading other models. Yes, so quickly worth noting that, so if we click on this piece of evidence, we can then click here and it takes us to the actual place where she made the comment. So we can mm-hmm. kind of check it out that easily. Um, yeah, and now can I get back though? <laughs> I think I can. Well, there are too many things. That, well, okay. How do I get back then? Um, Go back to. I know um, it's just that I have so, so many things have popped up. Here we go. Yes. Okay, I got it. Okay, and then. So, yep. Go ahead. Then. Um, uh, so this was a course on poetry. Um, one of the first things we did was after writing the bios was um, take photographs. So it was multimodal. Um, and if you um, scroll down a bit, places I love. Um, so Wendy has um, taken photographs of a place she loved in Mexico. And then she's... Um, in Youth Voices, uh, just posted the photographs with, and you can click on that, um, with um, some text that she wrote about them. So, um, poetry, it's about, um, uh, it's about uh, creating images, right? Uh, Images and ideas and um, communicating ideas through images and rhythm. So it was a great place to start with the photographs. Then um, uh, Paul, um, you had created a collection in um, Now Comment of poems of place. That she annotated, yep. So she um, annotated Gwendolyn Brooks's A Song in the Front Yard. Um, And then she, then she, can you go down a bit? This is where she wrote hers, right? I mean, go up a bit, just a bit. Yeah, places we love and then down. Um, so she wrote a poem of Mexico, if you go down a little bit. And she commented on um, the poems that other that um, her group mates picked. So she commented on Jillian's poem that Jillian wrote and then she, also commented on another classmate's poem that um, they wrote. Karen, I'm looking at the clock and feeling like we gotta go a little faster, but. um, Let's go down to the, um, so there's poems that she wrote. um, And then, uh, but if you go down. These are are her own poems that she wrote. Right. Published on Youth Voices. Uh Um, What does she remember? Um, poem I invite you to come read these. They're wonderful. Go ahead. <laughs> Take a look at the close reading of poetry and move down. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So um, just click briefly on, um, well, you can see that uh, in, the, in her small group, each um, classmate had picked a poem um, and uh, done um, uh, annotations on it. And then they did annotations for each other um, poem. So then go down to the gateway essay. Our 10th graders um, demonstrate that they um, uh, know and do, uh, um, know they can, they know and can do and value what a 11th grader needs to be able to do in order to um, be admitted into the 11th grade. They need to do what we call a gateway essay. Uh, um, so uh, this is um, Wendy's, Gateway essay in um, uh, Google Docs, and then she posted um, the beginning a, a draft of it in Youth Voices. She commented on Octavio's, um, and then so you can see she's writing. The idea is to read, to write, um, to publish, and 
to comment, um, to communicate. All right, I'm sorry to rush you through here, but Suzanne, <laughs> I'm sorry, we won't have time for George, I don't think. I'm gonna stop sharing and ask Suzanne, do you wanna share your portfolio, a portfolio from what you've been doing? Yeah, I can um, yeah. see if that will. Okay, hold on now. And then we'll kind of comment on both Karen and Suzanne, unless Suzanne's gonna take longer and we can start talking to Karen. <laughs> Um, do I have to open system preference? I can't just open. Oh, wait, share. Oh, you might have to do that. Okay. System what preferences like just opens automatically for you. Go ahead. Yeah, while she's doing that. Somebody had a question. What I liked about, about Kieran, the, the one Kieran just showed, you know, is that it's clearly the personal approach to it. I mean, the, the things that we're seeing, um, poetry can be very personal can, and, and the idea of um, tying what she's interested in and also potentially branching out, going beyond poetry to the ideas and um, their other academic studies, you know, to the notions of what they might be learning in history or social studies or, or whatever else could um, be a gateway to those other things. Yay, Suzanne got it up. Good. <laughs> um, Okay, so I'm going to start with, this is, I have three that I can show you. So um, what you're looking at is the homepage. So the students, what I begin with is we do do some writing projects first and then we build the website. And I kind of don't talk about the portfolio first. What we talk about first is branding. And I have the students do a lot of work about what branding is, how to brand themselves. And again, when this, when the Common App started asking for this personal URL, it just upped the game for me because now the students had the most respected audience they could ever want, which would be the colleges they're applying to, to look at these websites. Um, and for the first time this past year, I took the passwords off. So I said to them right at the beginning, you can't publish anything on this website unless you're ready for people to see it. And it really, um, gave them so much more respect for the whole process. So they start with an about me page um, And before we do this we look at other Young people's websites these kids in their 20s um, Often in tech some in not-for-profit work and so they get some real um, real models of what Real kids are doing and I say kids young young people are doing to get jobs, right? But they their audience are, is colleges and I kind of like that that's so then we do a resume and um, you know, they design, again, they're designing all these pages. I'm using Weebly with them. So every kid looks a little bit different than I require. So I require the homepage, the resume inspirations. I ask them to find three things or people who inspire them. And then they get three free choice pages. So Rohan is a tennis player. So he has a whole page about his tennis. He does a travel page. And now my, how can I, can I get rid of that? Yeah. Okay. And then he chose to do a page about his family. I mean, the three pages they choose, th this is where that whole role of identity comes in for portfolios for me. I always loved how kids would design their portfolios and really make it personal. And then you'll see here now we have the writer's portfolio. Now, this was this year. We went out in March. So I would normally have about six or seven sub pages. So the first, um, and again, what I, what we stress together, we keep talking about is, you know, you're telling your audience who you are, but then you can also, they can also see what you can do as far as what kind of writer you are. So this is, um, they write a personal essay at the beginning of the year and everything is a click away. And he came in a little late to the course. Let me show you another one. The, um, the food writing, it's, this unit is just such a great unit. And we do a six word food memoir. They, we have a chef come in and create um, soup for them and they're blindfolded and they have to use all their other senses to experience the, uh, the sensory experiences besides sight. And then they write a poem and they, we took a field trip to a museum and they did some work there and then they write a food memoir. Um, and these are really wonderful pieces about how, you know, it's always about some food, but it's really about something about their lives or relationships or connections. We, so are, they, we are again going to be able to do all of that, by the way. 
<laughs> so, what do you mean? Like, never mind. Okay. <laughs> the, and then, the, the, diff, the difficulty of, of eating together in class, the difficulty of going to a museum. Oh my God, together. I know. I, I, mean, I just, eventually we will yeah, be able to do all of that again. And then, Paul, this goes back, um, they write a reflection, and way back in our days at University Heights, we always use the what, so, what, now, what model. Mm -hmm. And that's how I generate their reflections on their pieces of work. You know, what did you do? What, you know, what, and what did you learn? Why is that important? And what's next for you? So, um, and then another, this is another one, and um, I think earlier it was, oh, I forget who was talking about student activism, but this is, she's really an environmentalist. And I think I love, this also part of what I'm considering their websites is they get to communicate again to their audiences, you know, who they really are and the work they do and their, their passions, you know, and um, she's also a big animal lover. And then again, so there's these other interests in their lives, the things that they do with themselves and then their writer's portfolio. Um, I don't know, is that, is that a good? I'm, I'm afraid it's gonna yeah. have to do. I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how do I get back? Oh gosh. <laughs> you, you can find it. Well, you'll okay. get back. Did you get it? Um, I, do I don't know. Sure? Oh, here we are. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Um, so um, why don't we, just so there's enough time, what does this, um, Tanya, what does this look like with adults? How do, how do you know, how do you know their portfolios have bad worthy work in them? <laughs> Oh, that's the question you're going to ask me to answer. I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to answer the question I want to answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do, it, do whatever you want. Yeah. Might. So, you know, as the director of national programs at the National Writing Project, I have the great joy to work with the most amazing teachers from 180 sites all around the country, all of whom, uh, especially traditionally, all of whom had had a very similar uh, sort of entry experience into the community where they had this, this what we called the Invitational Summer Institute and for a long time that was very standard it was like four or five weeks in the summer um, it, people would talk about you know they wrote together they shared their teaching practice they um, they read research about the teaching of writing uh, and they and they had these shared experiences so then over time, the world changed and people's school calendars changed. And um, we got to this point where we realized, um, A, that this, the shared experience might not be as shared as it had been traditionally. And also that that shared experience really um, only let a very narrow sort of flow of te great teachers connect to the writing project because you had to be able to have four to six weeks in the summer and uh, your life had to allow the space and you might have to pay for credits whatever there are a lot of reasons um, that that experience wasn't necessarily going to work for everyone and that the world had moved on like paul you were and we have we have new reasons now yeah and we have yeah. of course we now have these new reasons but even way before these reasons paul you kind of led the network in bringing people uh, to know the writing project through some other way than the Summer Institute at their um, at their site. And so uh, a few years ago, we did this project called Building New Pathways to, which were really new pathways into the National Writing Project. And one of the first things we did was sort of get underneath the Summer Institute experience to say, okay, uh, I was really thinking about what David was saying about mm -hmm. high school graduates, like what do we want to be able to say people who come from our high school are prepared to know and are able to do. And we really began to ask that same question about writing project teacher consultants, like what do they know, what are they able to do. We would talk to people from outside the writing project who'd say I really want to recruit writing project teachers for this because they are special like because they know things or they know how to do things so what we started to do is ask within the network and outside the network what does that mean what what is it that people are able to do and we I'm going to share my screen quickly cool. we narrowed that uh, the answer to that question Let's see if I can find it mm -hmm. maybe I'm not going to share my screen um, Oh, because I've got everybody else, all the things that people have called up during this conversation. Um, 
So we narrowed that to six social practices. We said, when people say, I want to work with writing project teachers because I have a, I can start from a shared base. I know um, what, what people know how to do. We narrowed it to these six social practices, which I would show you, but I think I'll waste time. I can't talk and say that at the same time. Which, right. which are badges or not? Well, okay, so that was a big question. Right now, those six practices are not badges, which is why when you say micro-credential, I hide my head in shame because this is really a macro-credential. It's really not a micro-credential. Uh, we have begun to dis decide to talk about the costs and benefits. We talked about them at the time of separating out these six social practices and saying you can get a badge for being a collaborator, you can get a badge for writing and sharing your writing, you can get a badge for making your teaching public. Um, but in truth, right now, what we have is a teacher consultant badge, which means that you have um, demonstrated these six, All six social of them. practices. Thank you, Bud Hunt. Go for it. Always been my partner on this project. <laughs> um, and I wanna say that um, some of the things that, um, some things we have inside. So, so if you have a teacher consultant badge, uh, your writing project director has said that you have demonstrated that taking up these six social practices in the work you do collaboratively with other teachers. And um, that might mean you went through an invitational summer institute, but it might mean you found your way through a variety of pathways to taking up these practices in community in the writing project. You've come and on TTT three times. You, no, right, see, times. there you go, right? That might be <laughs> a way playing. to demonstrate. <laughs> exactly. And what we've also found is now that people have this framework, they use it to say, you're a teacher consultant, and I know you are familiar with these practices. They might look a little different at your site than my site, but I know that you won't be surprised if I say, take out a piece of paper and write. I know you won't be surprised if I call you and say, hey, I like your work. Can you share that with other people? Uh, but we've also found that people are using it in the other way, too, to say, how can I design new programs for teacher learning at my writing project site? that are not the Summer Institute, but that build these practices for teachers and have them write and collaborate and share their work. So that's a teacher consultant badge. It is maybe not the answer that you asked me. No, to. no, it's fine. I, I, you referred earlier to um, some of David's thoughts about, so if you can look at the book that he published last year, um, I'm, I'm hearing some of the process that he describes really well in that book that, that a school goes through to develop this thing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they're macro and then they become micro and then right. those kinds of working on standards together is an important part of the process. Yeah. Just, and I, I did not shout out Bud because I didn't realize he was here tonight, but well, there he uh, in the first building of this teacher consultant badge, we had this three year grant and Bud was really an essential partner to thinking this through with me. So he could also answer questions about it. So I, I, I would like 30 seconds, maybe, maybe 45. In the chat, I just put a link to, and I will share my screen. I do have a way to kind of show overall what we've been working on. And I think we can show it kind of quickly. I developed this page because I want to be able to show the principle, right? Where we're working, what's going on with these badges and portfolios. So this is everything on one page, right? This is Ellis Preparatory Academy. If you click on any of these, you will go to the similar portfolios that um, Karen was showing, right? And then there, through the whole course, they did, I don't know, six, seven, eight badges. They did playlists and they got these badges, right? So anybody who earned that badge is listed here, right? And you can go click and see the evidence um, for these badges that they earned. Um, here's the youth activism that was mentioned earlier. Um, so, and then this is a badge for doing their portfolio. So, um, <coughs> The, let me see. Let me just show. So one of the one of the things that I'll show. I will show one. One of the things that Idilkus needs to work on is being a little more concise. 
but <laughs> her reflections go on for some time and mm -hmm. then eventually you get to her her evidence for each of these again um i kind of want to make a case for being able to say you've earned, um instead of 54 hours what we could start saying is if your youth in your classes earn four badges right and then put a portfolio together then they can get credit so that's that's kind of um some of the challenging and and curious work i think we're doing um again i i do want to refer to david's book because david you you describe a year-long process and i worry about i do i want to put the worry out there i also <laughs> worry about the rush that people might go to like oh we could do portfolios and then you know my class will have portfolios like there's a lot of work involved so i just wanted to ask you to say a word about that I, I agree. It's definitely something that needs to be seen as a long-term thing, but it's like a lot of things. You do want to have some um, short-term wins. You know, it's like if you want to get healthy, you want to lose weight, all that. Um, you know, we all have done it. Trying to do the long-term, I'm going to lose 20 pounds. If you can do something smaller and get, one of the nice things about the badges is that you can get some uh, short-term rewards. So, um, you I'm, definitely I'm need to keep that long term. I've often said that a badge is a mini portfolio, right? If it oh, has, yeah. yeah, right. So, yeah. So that's the, an entryway. I mean, that's just something that you can start with. Um, I completely agree with Tanya that the long term one you want to think about are these macro credentials or what's really important across the whole program. But to start, let's, you know, if people are rushing and they want to see the power of it, it's like, okay, let's pick something cool that's relatively short term, you know, how much um, progress can you make in two weeks or whatever? I mean, or how can we go from um, the revision process of a single piece of writing, you know, and show how it goes from idea to graphic organizer to rough draft to final draft and be able to show that. That can be a microcosm of the process to get people excited about the long term. Nikki, I invited you here and then I didn't let you say anything. I'm sorry, no, <laughs> but please. No, I, I'm, I'm really here to learn more than to talk. Cool. So this is really, um, I'm, I'm pretty encouraged by, by David's last statement that you could, be, you could start with a bite-sized piece rather than take on, you know, the, the entire um, course structure to begin. All 54 hours, man, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm thinking about how we can encourage um, our pre-service teachers to take on a bite-sized piece um, and therefore be really helpful to teachers when school doesn't open in the fall or when it opens and closes so they could swoop in um, and provide instruction, but they're not going to be ready to do it for the entire course, right? Um, if they could do a bite-sized piece. Um, that would be, you know, that would be a nice step forward. I want to give anybody else open mic here. Anybody want to jump in with the thought? <laughs> These were just lovely to see. Thank you for everybody who shared. Yeah, thank you all. All right, thanks a lot. Um, we did emphasize sort of <laughs> showing the student work and I, I, there's more discussion we could do here, but um, thank you all for joining us tonight. And this will go up on YouTube and be a now comment and people can keep talking about it if they'd like. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, you, Paul. thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Good to see you. <laughs> Bye, Kieran. <laughs> Bye, Suzanne. Bye, Shantanu. Thanks, Paul, for putting this together. Thank you, David. Okay, see you soon.